Oh, a pumpkin! Oh, oh my god, that's so cute! <laughs> that's not a chicken! <laughs> Pumpkin's really versatile, sweet or savoury, and I think this challenge is really going to force us to get creative, and I think it's really fun. So I'm pretty excited about it. Um, I'm doing a little pumpkin salad. With whisk um, to what? <laughs> whisk creme <and> fresh. <laughs> <laughs> pumpkin salad, creme fresh. Butter bugs, mm -hmm. little greens, um, a pickled pumpkin, which is going to be also become the vinaigrette. Yep. Keep it on that pumpkin, Nils. Mon Amelia. My first dish is simple. Bug and pumpkin salad. Yes, meal. I've got my bug coral creme fraiche. My pumpkin's been caramelising down in butter. It's looking beautiful. I've poached my bugs in a vanilla butter. Now I just have to finish plating. Nice. Looks beautiful, Amelia. My plate is done, so I put it to the side and I just have to move on to my next dishes. This pumpkin is my best friend. Don't chop your finger off, Amelia. For my second dish, I've got a pumpkin cake, a beautiful pine nut caramel, some pumpkin puree, but I also need to make sure I still have enough pumpkin for my third dish. Amelia's dish, butter poached bug. What do we think? I loved everything about it. I think she did the right thing by incorporating uh, that coral into that creme fraiche. So squeeze a lemon, and I thought that she probably would have won the day for me. The pumpkin was the hero there. It was a really, really lovely dish. The bug was cooked perfectly. I thought it was a well-rounded, well-executed dish. So in the first half an hour, already started roasting off some pumpkin. So now it's time to blitz it. And this pumpkin will go into the cake batter and be the pumpkin flavor for the cake. Are you making ice cream? Yeah. It is kind of stupid to try and make ice cream in 20 minutes, but I'm doing a different version of an ice cream. I'm not doing an on glaze base. I'm doing like a whipped ice cream. It's a great race. Good idea. And I just hope that I'm able to get it churned in time. <laughs> race. Well done. Nice meals. Great meals. My pumpkin cake, that looks great. I get it into two different moulds because I need a backup plan if one doesn't bake on time. I'm just doing mini ones, Tess. Keep it up, Mealsy. I've made them quite small, so they should cook in about 10 minutes. I've decided to do a pine nut caramel to go with my pumpkin cake because I think pine nuts and pumpkin work really well together. I start by caramelising sugar. I get that on the brink of burning, and then I add in my cream and butter to make it a beautiful caramel. OK, so moving on to Amelia's cake. Thoughts? Loved it. I thought the pumpkin caramel thing was really, really delicious, very Moorish, actually. Pine nuts, if I was going to follow anything, I would say use the pumpkin seeds, for yeah, God's sake. They're there, why not strange. use them? Um, the cake itself was really, 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 really delicious. How moist was it? Yeah. It couldn't be any more moist. It, it was unbelievable. It kind of reminded me of like a really good sticky date pudding. Yeah. You, know, you had that great caramel, you had that sort of dense, tender sponge, mm. and everything was sort of beautifully balanced in the end. I could eat that all day, every day. All right, let's move on. Reese's dish. Okay, well, what do we think of Reese's dish? I didn't love it. I, I, I thought the technique was near on perfect. I just thought there was a bit too much cardamom in there for me. I wanted a bit more pumpkin, wow, less you cardamom. You must but... have got a bit of cardamom. I didn't get any. Mate, I, I got... Oh, yeah. Wow. I loved it. The mascarpone ice cream was really rich and delicious. The cake was light, airy. I mean, there wasn't much not to love about that. And that little pepita kind of crumbly, it was like crumble or whatever thing it was. on top. I thought that really brought yeah. it together. Great textures all over, wonderful flavours. 
I've enjoyed Heston Week so much. It's my week. So being in here is a bit disappointing. As soon as I saw the big pumpkin, I was automatically inspired by the fairy tale story of Cinderella. She rides a big pumpkin to the ball and that story is full of magic and wonder and excitement and I really want to take those concepts and the pumpkin and put it into a dish today. I wanted this pumpkin to look like a chocolate bar. Once you start eating it, you realise it's not quite a chocolate bar. You get flavours of pumpkin, pops, a little bit of creamy chocolate. Heston loves experimental things and I think that's what this dish is today, so uh, hopefully he'll enjoy it. Good stuff, Callan. For another added level of surprise, I want some stuff to sit underneath the chocolate bar, so I'm going to put a roasted white chocolate underneath. To make the frozen pumpkin cream, I boil up some pumpkin, heat some cream and milk, and then put it all into a blender. For me, it's really important that I impress Heston today. It'd be really disappointing to go home in Heston week, so I think it's uh, crucial to cook the best today. The way I approach food's a little bit wacky, a little bit creative, and a little bit left to centre, and today I really want to take what's at the heart of the Cinderella story, that fun and excitement, and put that into a dish. So the goal of my dish today is to play with your mind a little bit. Uh, you think it's a chocolate bar, and then once you start eating it, you realise it's a combination of pumpkin and chocolate. Callum, this is right up your yeah, alley, isn't um, it? I think deception in food is something that's so amazing. It's what brings theatre to it, and that's what I love the most. So I'm going to try and encapsulate that along with one of my favourite childhood memories. So I'm going to combine um, pumpkin and white chocolate. I'm going to make it look like a white chocolate bar. So have you got a mould for Yeah, it's just one of the blast chiller. Oh, yeah? Can we have a quick look? I mean, they're quite big, but maybe if you had six of them, times join them you yeah. join them up and you look, it looks like a bar. Yeah. That on its own, mm -hmm. with garnishes, will just look like a dessert. Yeah. But yes, yeah. it's going to look like chocolate Go bar. Back. Okay. I'm going to have to adapt and think of something else to make it look more like a real chocolate bar. Heston Week's been so good, but uh, today brings back what this competition's about. It's about cooking well or going home, so I think it's uh, crucial to cook the best today. Come on, Cal! I'm trying to make an open chocolate bar, and once you start eating it, you realise it's not quite a chocolate bar. You get flavours of pumpkin, pops, a little bit of creamy chocolate. Now it's time to turn my pumpkin cream into frozen pumpkin creams. It's Heston week, so to make our ice cream, we can use liquid nitrogen. Put the mixture in the bottom of the bowl, get it creaming, and then pour in the liquid nitrogen. There's something really amazing about Heston's elimination. It's weird, it's wonderful, it's exciting, and that's what I love, and that's what I love about food. Even though it's an elimination, I'm loving the challenge and loving the opportunity to cook a wacky dish for the judges. Love it, Callum, love your work. The frozen pumpkin cream's in the blast chiller. I'm going to plate it as if it's an open chocolate bar. Give a bit of fun and excitement to the dish. The only surprise we don't want is one of you going home. Don't let it be you. Ten minutes to go. Heston was a bit worried. It wouldn't look like a chocolate bar. Had a little bit of an idea change in the last minute. I'm going to go with the idea of an open chocolate bar. Someone's gone in for a bit of a nibble. There's wrapper still left on it. To plate it up, I pop the frozen pumpkin cream out of its mould, stick some together, put a little bit of gold leaf so it looks like an open wrapper, and then put that on top. I'm pretty happy with the dish that I put up. I really feel that I've done everything I can to make the dish look like a chocolate bar. It'd be really disappointing to go home in Heston Week, so I hope that the judges can see where I'm coming from and uh, hopefully it works. What's this dish and how's it going to trick us? So I've made an open chocolate bar. So a chocolate bar that's already been opened, someone's already uh, gone in for a bit of a nibble. <laughs> so it's already been opened. And now I'm looking at it, it's kind of Willy Wonka, isn't it? It's, it's that description great. of peeling back the gold wrapper. Yeah. Uh, so it's um, a frozen pumpkin cream, there's roasted pumpkin and a bit of chocolate crumb. I believe you've got a bit of magic to do. A little bit. <laughs> So the concept of the dish was like Cinderella's pumpkin and I wanted to include that some way or another so I included it in the scent. Callum, we're going to taste, mate. Get Thank out you. of here. you say chocolate bar, my mind is looking for sweet and it's looking for chocolate. And what I love about Cannon's dish is you, it's unmistakably pumpkin and then just at the end that roast chocolate, a um, little bit of popping candy comes through and it comes through loud and clear and finally you find it. And there's a really strange sense of reward about that. Where he's been clever is he's teased us into the idea of having this open bar of chocolate and teased us into the idea that it is a bar of chocolate. 
It was just, it was a clever, clever thing to do. I think he, in a really hard challenge, he's done a really nice job. I feel nervous. I feel determined at the same time. I really want that pin. <laughs> so I'm going to use a traditional dish that I love. I'm making pumpkin pilaf with caramelized quail and saffron jus. Got that butternut squash. That's going to take a lot longer. So prioritize, young lady. Rice, literally 18 minutes. Fork it through. Let it steam. Prioritize the list of importance. Come on, you got this. Cooking against professional chef Joe Barrett is going to be a big challenge. I'm making a pilaf with roasted pumpkin and quail. How are we doing? I'm going to debone the quail now. My idea was of just uh, holding it. So you either go down there and smash that whole thing through there, or you go through there like that. You take out this centre bone here, or you right. take off those lovely breasts there, and you've got the two breasts. Right. Choice is yours, OK? OK. Good girl. To have Gordon as a mentor. Right, how's the button at squash? Tor is very scary. <laughs> now start visualising this on the plate, OK? So you can get a little bit of finesse. He's pushing all three of us forward towards that pin. Your ethnicity, where are you from, background? Azerbaijan. So think of that powder, think of the spice, think of the turmeric, think of the ground and cumin. Yeah. Think of the blend that's going on. Yeah. Bring the personality to that dish. OK. OK? Come on. You've got this. In the pilaf, I'm going to use caramelized onions. The sweetness of the onion, the saffron, turmeric, cinnamon and cardamom, it's delicious. Remember, time-wise, prioritise. Now, look at me. There's no point going to cook rice now. The pilaf has got to be fluffy, light, magical. Not stodgy and overcooked. Look, time, prioritise in your mind. Come on, okay. time. Don't kill the food. I'm hoping that my second batch of rice turns out well. I'm tasting the pilaf. Um, it's delicious. The flavors are all there. The pumpkin and the quail turn out perfect. Now tidy up that plate. OK, tidy up. Little glaze on top of it. Little glaze. Pumpkin pilaf with caramelized quail and saffron jus. Wow, look at that dessert. Yeah, it looks great, doesn't it? You can see vegetable on there, and, and that's awesome. That... It looks good. It looks great, and you'd, you'd be pretty pleased if you were in a mm. cafe and you got that. Mm -hmm. So remind us what we've got. We've got so quail. Quail, a little basmati rice. We've got pumpkin. Some, some uh, sort of, like, lavender, is it? Yeah. I love that pumpkin. Mm. I love it. it's sort of thin and slightly yeah. caramelised and chewy. The remarkable stuff for me is the onions in the rice, is the that chewiness of that really lovely um, roast pumpkin combined with the, the marinated goat's cheese and beautifully cooked quail. Yeah. Look at the colour, great char on the outside and just that, that gentle pink blush. It's a really delicious dish. I, I think it's a beautiful plate of food and I think it's been beautifully cooked. I think the rice is perfect. And those little pumpkin chips are deliciously Moorish. Making sweet? Yeah. Today I'm making a pineapple tart to ten with a chilli pumpkin caramel. May I use two of these? Thanks. I need to get onto my pastry straight away because that needs a maximum amount of time to rest. I think without having the blast chiller, it's going to make it really difficult with my pastry. I need to make sure that that gets in the freezer straight away to rest, otherwise it's not going to be... It's not going to pop up and be flaky. OK. My biggest concern in this cook today is my pastry. A rough puff pastry needs lots of layers. It needs butter in between each of the layers because it needs to puff up in the oven. I don't have a lot of time and I don't have the blast chiller. I need to make sure that the pastry has enough time to rest. Pastry's kind of key. Yes, the pastry is kind of key. Are you happy with your pastry? So far, so good. Because we, we, yeah. we want that lovely, flaky, richness, deliciousness. Absolutely. That's, that's the goal. 75 minutes is enough time to get this dish done, but time in the MasterChef kitchen just seems to go ridiculously quickly, so I need to work really quickly and just hope that I've got enough time to get it done. If I get that in, in 20 minutes, it should still be OK. 
because I really want to get my dish tasted. I've chosen to use the pineapple, chilli and pumpkin because I know that pineapple and chilli work really well together. That's good. It needs more chilli though. My biggest concern in this cook today is my pastry. I need to make sure that the pastry has enough time to rest. I need to make sure that the oven's hot enough. I grab my dough out of the freezer and start rolling it again. It needs to be rolled in a certain way that when it cooks in the oven, all of the layers puff up. I don't have a lot of time and I don't have the blast chiller. It's going to be super tight. Keepers <sighs> stressing here. All right. I'm making a pineapple tartatan. The most important thing with this dish is to get the pastry right because it needs to puff up. It should be golden and glossy around the edges and the puff pastry should form a bit of a lip and be nice and puffy. All right, get your pastry in in a minute. And I all of a sudden realised... Um, I didn't have my oven on, so I'm a little bit worried that the temperature's quite low because I've just turned it on, so hopefully that comes up to temperature because... I need a fairly hot oven to cook the pastry. But if the oven's not hot enough and it doesn't puff, then I don't have a dish. I'm stressed, I'm under pressure. The only thing that I'm still not 100% sure about is the pastry. At the end of the day, I'm not going to know until it actually cooks in the oven whether it'll work. I pull the tart out of the oven, it's looking pretty good. I have my plate on top of the pan, I flip it over and pull off the pan and it looks beautiful. I'm just relieved. It looks really flaky and it looks great. It's maybe a little bit underdone, so I'm hoping it's okay. My biggest concern is my pastry. I really hope the pastry is cooked enough. A pineapple tart tatam with a pumpkin chili caramel and toasty bits. Nice. That's good. Toasty I'm bits buying. are good. We like I'm ordering bits. that. <laughs> right, we're ordering that straight away. <laughs>
don't know what you guys think, but I like it. I think it's really good. The cheesecake is most definitely cheesecake. And I like the way that the chai spices, and particularly the salt, plays into that dessert the whole way through. I think it's in a number of elements. So even though you're eating dessert, you're reminded constantly that you've got those savoury notes, those toasty savoury notes of the, of the crumb, of the pumpkin, of the seeds, you know, all the way through as you eat it. I think they met the brief, that savoury element to it. It's got a nice chai flavour there coming through. Cheesecake's nice and nice, and quite delicate, nice and, nice and refreshing. The real battle you've got when you're trying to make a, a savoury dessert is telling people it's definitely dessert with all those salty flavours hitting you. Yeah. Because there's lots of saltiness, lots of spice coming through. And then when you taste the, the texture of the cheesecake, the biscuits crumb underneath, you go, oh, it's definitely dessert, because that, that's a dessert I've had a thousand times before. So I think that's a real, real success. It's warm, reassuring in terms of texture, but, gee, they've, they've absolutely given us saltiness and savouriness all through the dish. If you want to make a savoury dessert, this is exactly the way to go. I think that's a, a, real, a real success across the board. Charred pumpkin and salted cod. I think the pumpkin is my favourite. So much flavour for just a piece of pumpkin. And you see the little uh, salted cod? It's that little fairy floss, isn't it? It's just going to be the sum of a lot of little details today. That's what's going to make or break this. Can you do it? Of course you yeah. can. Yeah, yeah, yeah you can. can. Yeah. I'm going to get on to the pumpkin. There's some real-time pressures on that pumpkin. The pumpkin would take about 45 to 50 minutes to cook. Today I need to get things on super quick. The pumpkin, I remember it looked really distinctive. It was like a half moon sticking up out of the plate and was a really key element to the presentation of this dish. So I want to get it looking absolutely spot on. Let's go, guys. We've got to get the pumpkin on now. At this stage, I think Aram's in the groove. He's actually in a really good spot. He's a bit ahead. Just hope that he can keep going, work faster, and get it done. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Let's, Let's go. go. Let's go, guys. Perfect. Yeah, Let's go. Better. I know that I'm behind, so I cut the pumpkin wedges more than how Paul's was, and that should help the cooking process. That's it, Nicole. Think about that dish. I'm just going to have to start doing it freestyle because I don't have time to read the recipe anymore. I don't think I've ever worked this hard in my life. The marinade for the pumpkin is a combination of rice wine vinegar, sugar, cumin and kombu paste. I put the pumpkin in with the marinade in a sous vide bag and finally it's in the sous vide machine. Yep, good work. I'm just worried about his pumpkin because it's a lot thicker than the others. I don't know if that's going to affect the cooking time. I need to move really fast. I really need to start multitasking. Oh, yeah. I finally get the pumpkin into the water bath, but I've still got pumpkin chutney, I've got the salted cod, the pumpkin chips, and the charring of the pumpkin left to do. And I have to assemble and fry the fish. The calendar from three hours ago probably would have chucked in the town and said it's not going to be done, but got to push through and get as many elements as I can done. Uh, it's going to be an absolute stretch to get everything done in time, but I'm going to uh, push for it. So much more to do, and only 45 minutes to do it in. 45 to go. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. <laughs> So I'm moving on to the chutney now. The chutney is another element of, that goes with the pumpkin dish. Good pace. Come on, Aram. To make the chutney, I need to chop up onion, garlic and ginger, get that in a pan. I need to grate a whole lot of pumpkin, get that in the pan as well, soften that down too, and get it blitzed down. Good work, good work. Come on. Come on. Move on. The pressure's unreal. There's so much going on that it's kind of almost easier to forget the pressure and just kind of work as hard as you can. Guys, come on. You have to go very, very quickly, yes? Yes. You need to go faster, cleaner, yep. neater. Ooh. That felt better. Next thing I need to do is to make the pumpkin crisps. Come on, Aaron, keep pushing. You're doing well, man. I need to cut off a big wedge of pumpkin, slice it really thinly, and get those into the deep fryer. With the pumpkin crisps in the fryer, I can now get on to doing the crispy salt cod. And that feels really good because I can see it's the last element that I've got to do for the pumpkin dish. What are you going to have to do with that? I've got to launch it three times. Yeah, because it's salty, yeah? Too salty, yeah. So just get it, get it on. Don't yeah. worry about a recipe. You know how to cook. I'm trying to work really methodically. I'm really making an effort to work as smoothly as I can. There's a reason why every single element's on a dish, so I'm determined I'm not going to miss off a single element. Keep pushing, Aaron. Doing a great job, man. So they've got like 12, 13 minutes left. Yes. They've still got to dress their fish. Yes. Get the wedges of pumpkin out of the sous vide and obviously grill them. Like yours were, that yeah, nice sure. little char. Yum. Good work, Nick. I put the pumpkin on the plate and dress it with those pumpkin chips and something's missing. Come on, Aaron. 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 Come on,
Come on, Callum. Chutney, 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 chutney. The chutney, so I put the chutney on the plate. Get it on the plate, come on. Two minutes. Come Let's on. go. Go, 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 go. Come on, come on, come on. The last few minutes are absolutely frantic. I've got pieces of recipe scattered everywhere. The people in the gantry are yelling at me to season. It's just frantic in here. <laughs> I can barely breathe. It feels like I've actually run a marathon. I just hope the elements that I do have, even though it's not all of them, are enough to save me. Make sure you've tasted everything. Let's hope it's delicious. Ten seconds to go. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. That's it. Time's up. I often choke in the kitchen because of a lack of thinking time. So being able to really sort out your dish is a huge advantage that I don't think a lot of people considered. Amelia, yes, half sir. an hour yes. to think about something spectacular. Correct. Today I'm going to do um, a vegetarian dish. So you're candying some pumpkin, you're butter frying some pumpkin. Correct. And then I'm going to do raw brussies, roasted brussels. Um... Oh, so, so you're doing, this is, this is, what, this would be a classic George way. It Take is, two yeah, ingredients. Yeah. Treat them in lots of ways and make us look at each of those ingredients, the Brussels sprouts and the pumpkin, in a different manner. Correct. Um, you know what the question that, that, that people will ask? Yep. You had the lamb. I had the lamb. Was there a good reason for not using it? Yeah, it's riskier. This competition is a risky box. I chose the easy option and now I'm going risky with it. I think I'm taking a huge risk by not cooking this lamb chop. I'm worried that the dish will fall flat without it, but I'm also a little bit unsure that I can sway these three big meat eaters over to the vegetarian side. My main concern with my dish is that all the elements will be there, but there will be one thing lacking. Now, what's the dish? Brussels sprouts, pumpkin and potato done in nine ways. This is what we're talking about, yes. isn't it? Yeah. It's clever. But the question is, did it need just a little drizzle of lamb fat? Shredded crispy lamb. Oh. I'm going to swoop in and grab the bits. <laughs> Amelia. That is clever cooking. I was hoping for someone to look at those humble ingredients and do something sophisticated, clever, that can sit on a restaurant menu. And what we've got there is Delicious. deliciousness. Thank you. All right, so we're going to start with our pumpkin. Um, so any kind of pumpkin, but I've got a butternut pumpkin here, just um, diced, so I like to go quite even so it gets nice and caramelised. Um, and for me, it's all about kind of making it from like a standard pumpkin ravioli, I think, to something a little bit more exciting. At Nido, we make this delicious fermented chilli oil. Take note. Chilies, <laughs> blitz them, uh, add 5% salt to it, um, and then ferment them for about two to four days until they start to bubble, just in a jar with no lid, and then cook them out in olive oil, and that's how you get that really, really dark colour. Um, so you obviously get all the beautiful actual chilli and then all the flavour in that oil as well. So I just like to go quite hard with the chilli oil and you'll see how dark that is. Um, so nutmeg, okay. I like to yeah. use um, whole fresh spices where possible, so I've just grate, grated half a nutmeg. That's going to go into the oven, but I'm also going to do garlic. Um, so I literally am just going to drizzle some olive oil, not that much, and then pop some salt. When you say not that much, I'm, it's just I'm kind saying of maybe like 50, 20 mil. And you're just going to wrap that up. You can put it on the end of the tray. We're going to put this in the oven and you're going to forget about it for like half an hour, 40 minutes. The oven's at 200. The garlic's going to get all soft. The pumpkin's going to caramelise um, and that's going to make one half of our filling. Uh, right. We're going to make our ricotta. So I've got two litres of milk. Okay. We'll yep. add some salt as well. And I'm going to basically let this kind of come up to almost boiling point. You'll see like a milk skin starts to form. Obviously a lot of people like to top their pasta with cheese, which is great, delicious. I think another alternative which is really nice and provides a nice texture is pangrattato. So you need quite a bit of olive oil for this. Um, and we're just gonna let it fry and go really, really crispy. And it's gonna provide a really nice texture for the pasta. 
stale bread straight in. So we're gonna let that sizzle. You obviously need to watch this because bread burns very quickly. So it's like salty, crunchy, delicious things on top. And then the of top. course you can add to your herbs or whatever else you have lying Correct. around just to throw in chili. Yeah. All right, so we've got our ricotta with a bit of lemon zest and nutmeg as well, just to season it up. So what we want to do is um, blitz this into a smooth ricotta mix and then pop that into a piping bag. All right, so roast pumpkin straight into our food processor. Yeah, so the garlic is obviously nice and soft, so we just yeah. want to squeeze out quite a few of those cloves. Then we're going to go in with um, some goat's cheese. Pecorino cheese, and we're just going to blitz this until it is nice and smooth. So we're going to pop that into a piping bag as well. So now we've got our two fillings. Um, let's, I think we should roll out the pasta, make a few shapes. Yeah, because I'm really hungry. So what we're going to do is basically fold our dough in half just to make a line so I kind of know where my Should halfway... Should I do one too? Yes, do it. On. Where my halfway mark is. Then we've got our two mixtures. So our pumpkin mix in one piping bag that we've done and then our ricotta in the other. So we're going to pipe the pumpkin on one side and the ricotta on the other. And we want to make sure we're doing the exact same amount. And we don't want heaps because we don't want these to be huge. It's for you. Thank you. And then we're going to leave a tiny little gap where that line is because that's going to be the uh, the defining line that does separate our two flavours. Just going to steal this. Yep, that's yes. right. Uh, and then you're going to cut. Oh my so, wow. Yes. Beautiful. You have. That's so you got beautiful. pumpkin, ricotta, a little hole in the middle, so you're going to, all your sauce is going to get caught in there. Yep. Yep. And then your little oh, hole wow. at the bottom. Yep. We've stopped the burning of the butter. We're going to add in a bit of sage, just roughly torn. Lemon. Take note. All right, so pasta goes into the pan. So just like putting it in the pan, just finishing it off, you're getting all that butter, um, which is caramelised really nicely on the actual pasta. So we can probably bring that over and then we'll start plating. All right, so pasta goes straight into the bowl. So a bit of that crunchy bread on top because why not? All righty. Okay. So, Mel, there we yeah. have it. We've wow. got my roast pumpkin and ricotta double ravioli with brown butter and sage. Ooh, thank you very much. My goodness. Butter. Are you happy? <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> so nice. Elise. It's gorgeous, it's sweet. The pangrattato is perfect as well. It's a juxtaposition of both curies is just amazing. Excellent amazing. points for using the word juxtaposition. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much.